St. Raymond Nonatus, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Today we keep the feast day of the great saint of Our Lady, who is also a very great saint of charity. His name is interesting, and it suggests to us one of his traditional patronages, St. Raymond Not Born, the meaning of the Latin, non natus, that is to say he was taken by what they would call today a caesarean section from the womb of his mother who had died in childbirth. So St. Raymond is traditionally invoked for assistance by expectant mothers and at the same time in a general way for the protection of the health of children and of our Catholic family. St. Raymond, from his youth, was one of those saints, they say, who wasn't too much of a child, and even as a child, was almost more of an adult, and um, was very, very serious and very pious. His uh, father, desiring to turn him away from the priesthood uh, so that he would instead inherit the family farm, sent him out to work on one of his farms in, uh, in, in, the, um, in the country. He was born in the part of uh, Spain, in the um, late 12th century called Catalonia. Now, there he took care of the sheep. He was a shepherd, amongst his other duties, and he didn't mind. This is the case sometimes for saints because it gave him a chance to be quiet and to pray. There was a little chapel there, the Chapel of St. Nicholas, and he had a regular routine of going into this chapel at some point in his duties, his day, and praying, especially when he prayed before an image of Our Lady there, asking her to be his mother, since he had lost his mother before his own birth, and to show him what to do with his life, because his father was pulling him one way and his conscience, the Holy Ghost, a different way, often the case with young people. Well, the Blessed Mother spoke to him, and she said, yes, I will be your mother, and I want you to join this new order, which I have recently founded, for the, for the redemption of captives called Our Lady of Ransom or Our Lady of Mercy. The statue of the Blessed Mother on the altar is Our Lady vested in the habit of that very great, once very great, medieval order of mercy. And their idea was that they would gather up funds to uh, buy back the, the hostages who were being held by the Mohammedans. Um, back then it wasn't so much of a political statement as it is today. It was simply a matter of dollars and cents or the equivalent thereof in ancient times. So they had to raise money to ransom these captives so they wouldn't fall prey either to despair or to apostasy. So out of a great sense of charity for the body, but especially the soul, by the love of God, they asked many people to give money, and then they took a special vow if they needed to, they would give themselves in exchange for their suffering Christians who were in such danger, perhaps, of eternal damnation because of their difficult condition. So St. Um, Raymond Nonatus excelled in this charitable work. The greatest story that is told is that once in northern Africa, with a sum of money to redeem or buy back a number of Christian hostages who were enslaved, having run out of money before he ran out of Christians, he gave himself as a kind of a surety, saying, well, take me, and then in due time they'll send some money, and then everything else will be, will be paid off. And that way he got all the Christians out of the country. Uh, he was very cruelly treated, because they knew he was a very great man of the Christian faith very truly treated. And it was only because of the, um, those whose financial interest was at stake that uh, they lessened his, the cruelty, the rigors of his enslavement some, somewhat. But then St. Raymond was so full of charity and the Holy Ghost that as soon as he could, he went out into the streets, not only to find Christians and to take care of them, but to convert and baptize Muslims, which, as you may know, is that's the death sentence to this very day. How different are our Christian saints from the false popes of the false religion of Vatican II, who may never be sufficiently denounced as not popes, not Catholics, but antichrist. Our so-called popes today kiss the Koran, pray in the mosque, 
give permission for the building of mosques. What a shame that is on the memory of these saints and on the faith that the saints have handed down to us. Let us remember the lives of the saints. The people claim to be so confused about the Sede Vacante business or the business about going to a mass where the name of that big heretic Benedict is mentioned. Well, it's actually very simple. Let's have nothing to do with heresy. Let us stay with the religion, as the Apostle Paul says, once handed down to the saints. And if we do that, we'll be able to save our souls. Uh, what, a, what a mockery of Christianity this man Benedict represents and all of those who are in union with him. Well, our saint wasn't that way. He willingly gave himself, not for ecumenism, but to save souls, to preach the Holy Gospel. And because of that, once uh, he was warned and um, he was going to be put to death, but again, because of economic questions, they spared his life, but they made him run what we call the gauntlet. And uh, uh, there were all these with, um, with, uh, with weapons down, and his back was entirely torn to shreds as a result of that. But even that did not intimidate him. And finally, the Muslims, in their cruelty, came up with a new torture. And because he would not stop preaching the Catholic faith, then his lips were pierced, and a padlock was put in, and only the Muslim jailer had the key to the padlock to allow him to have food and drink at least once a day. And under that very cruel punishment, he persevered his last month in the Muslim captivity until he was ransomed. When the Holy Father, the Pope, heard what this great man had suffered, he made him a cardinal as a sign of his esteem and of his honor. And about a year after he returned from northern Africa, he asked now the cardinal, please, to come to Rome to advise him. So he set off humbly on foot. Even though he was a cardinal, he led a very humble life as a, as a religious with vows. And um, he only got a certain distance when he died. As he was dying, there was no priest to hand to give him the last rites. He who had uh, ministered to Christians in such an extraordinary way the whole of his priestly life, and our Lord himself appeared, uh, served by angels dressed in the habit of the Mercedarian order, the white habit, and our Lord gave uh, the saint the last rites, and then he went and he joined our Lord in heaven. Now, then there was a question of his burial. So his body was prepared for burial and put upon uh, a mule, a mule who happened to be blind, with the idea that they would take him to the nearest city and then they would make the arrangements with the members of the order. But instead of going to the nearest city, the mule went back to that little chapel where St. Raymond, as a young man, had prayed to the Blessed Mother. And the mule wouldn't go anywhere else. The mule went straight back to the chapel of St. Nicholas, even though it was off the beaten track. And uh, having deposited the sacred relics of the saint, the mule died. So they knew that was where the saint was to be buried, and then he was buried there. In addition to a very great zeal for our faith and a hatred of anything that savors of compromise, how unworthy it is of a Christian to compromise the faith once handed down to the saints. We should today stir up our soul as well for the spiritual and the corporal works of mercy. Father Alden Butler concludes his notice today with this little exhortation which I cannot resist reading to you because it is so beautiful. Alas, how cold nowadays is the charity in our breast, though it be essential characteristic of true Christians. Far from the heroic sentiments of the saints, do we not merely to gratify our prodigality, vanity, or avarice, refuse to give the superfluous part of our possessions to the poor, who, for want of it, are perishing with cold and hunger? Are we not slothful and backward in affording a visit or comfort to poor prisoners or sick persons, or in using our interest to procure some relief for the distressed? 
Are we not so insensible to their spiritual miseries as to be without all feeling for them and to neglect even to commend them to God with sufficient earnestness to admonish sinners according to our circumstances and the rules of prudence or to instruct by ourselves and others those under our care? By this mark, Is it not manifest that self-love and not the love of God and our neighbor reigns in our hearts, whilst we seek and pursue so inordinately our own worldly interest and are sensible to it alone? Let us sound our own hearts and take an impartial view of our lives, and we shall feel whether this test of Christ and of Satan which is self-love, be more sensible in our affections, or whether it is the governing principle of our actions, of a little examination of conscience for this Friday evening. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.